99.9% of men will never commit without these six things. In this video, you will discover how to actually discover what are some of the qualities that are important to a man and that would then naturally lead him to ask you to be his girlfriend or in a long-term committed relationship. Now, if you're ready to discover how to be the most attractive woman you can be to attract the right man for you, then pop in the comment section, I am ready. I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And look, this is the channel where we magnetize your man so that the man you want, desires, and hello, pursues you forever. Now, if you like anything about this background, what I share, what I wear, do me a favor, give it a like, and also don't forget to subscribe as well by pushing that bell button. And of course, sharing is caring, so let a girlfriend or two know about this video. Now also, don't forget to listen till the very end for a surprising bonus. Let's go ahead and dive into the six things that 99.9% six, .9 of men need to have before they're asking you for commitment. Number six is they need to experience a state change. See what happens is we are walking through life in sort of a hypnotic state. We're constantly on autopilot and we're looking where else can we predict what happens next. Now, when we can predict that, then life becomes rather mundane. It becomes uninteresting, right? It becomes really colorless and there's really nothing to be excited about. So if you're able to create a state change in a man's life, you are able to pull him out of his everyday wonk, 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 like automatic pilot, automatic pilot, how I just said that, right? Even that was just like a pattern interrupt. And that's really what it is. It's a pattern interrupt because we have a chain reaction of patterns that we run through every single day. We wake up the same way, right? We get out of the bed the same way. We drink the coffee the same way. We drive the same way. We get on the same side of the road the same way. Everything is the same. So when you cause a statement, and it could be something so crazy, it could be I teach my women how to do that um, with online dating, in conversations, but essentially causing a little bit of an interruption for that man. Whoa, I did not see this coming. Well, I thought you're this kind of woman, but wow, that actually shows me you are actually way more this kind of woman, you know what I mean? And that's actually also not true. So you can't not be put into a category and that's gonna be highly attractive to him. Now I'd love to hear, let me know which country or state are you watching from? Number five is authenticity. Now, I'm sure you've heard that before. Yeah, 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 I know, Auntie. But hold on a second. Do you actually know what that really means? Because what happens is we have five developmental stages and five quote-unquote chances of developing coping mechanisms. So when we experience a disappointing uh, like in scenario in our childhood, what happens is it causes some shame. It causes powerlessness. It causes helplessness. And then what we do as a consequence of that, we be colored over, right? How do we color it over? With a coping mechanism. So we're taking on a new mask that's actually not us, but it's going to get us really far in life. For example, if you got really disappointed for asking someone for help, right, because you needed something and you didn't get your needs met, which by the way was the case for me, and it's the case for many women that go through my programs, you then say, well, wait a minute, I'm just going to put myself into a position where I don't need anyone. Brilliant. Okay. And then what happens is you become misindependent. Now, is that who you authentically are? No, you're not. You're actually this lovable, warm, you know, approachable um, person in somewhere inside, right? But you have untaught yourself because last time you let a man, uh, a man, a woman, you know, like just like your parents, a person, like let you actually in and you actually allowed yourself to be vulnerable and to ask for help and you didn't get it, you got the disappointment. You said, you know, I'm never going to experience that again. So what you want to learn is how to become even more authentic. Because you see, when you go on a date and you show up with your mask, 
right? So let's so let's say your mask is performance, right? Like you know, I went to Harvard and I got this degree and I won this championship and all the things. So it's constantly just about achieving, performing. Then what you communicate to the man is, oh. It's time now to compete. It's time to show off how I perform and what I have achieved. And this is the last thing you want to have happen on a date, especially if you want to end up with this man, because now you're creating a competition versus a connection, right? So you're causing a separation versus like really combining your resources sort of like together. And also, you're actually diminishing any polarity that you could have had the chance of creating in the relationship. So make sure you are staying authentic. Number four is trust. Now, trust is a very simple term. There's actually three levels of trust. There's trust to self, trust to others, and trust to God. Now, so with trust to others, it's really interesting because usually if you don't trust other people, it's usually because you don't trust yourself. So it really starts with yourself, right? So like really seeing, hmm, where can I not trust my decisions? Or where have I said I'm going to participate in something, but then I didn't? Or where did I, quote unquote, committed to something, but didn't I didn't follow through, right? Or maybe I committed to myself and I didn't follow through. Maybe I said I'm going to go to the gym and I ended up not going to the gym. Right, like when did I break um, report to myself? Where did I break a promise to myself? Where did I break an agreement to myself? And then, of course, you don't trust other people because you think they are capable to do the same, which you're absolutely right about that, right? Like you will actually bring out in the man the relationship you have to yourself. One of my quotes is the quality of men that you attract into your life is directly proportional to the relationship you have with yourself, right? And so then what that means is the more congruent, the more trusting the relationship is with yourself, the more you will attract men into your life who are truly trustworthy and who you also will find yourself easier to trust them. And then what's interesting is, of course, I'm unless you're dealing with a sociopath, a psychopath, and so on, right? But normally, people want to step into the expectation you have of them. So if you said, you know, I know you're really trustworthy, they will want to be trustworthy to you. So go ahead and try that out and let me know how it works. Now, if you're liking this content so far, please give it a like share it with your girlfriend, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. All right, number three is be self-oriented. Now, I just had a baby a couple months ago, and one of my biggest goals in life is actually teaching my baby to be selfish. So what happens so often in dating, romantic relationships, also in friendships and family dynamics, is that there's this enmeshment taking place. There's codependence taking place because we are seeking approval from the other person. And that means like, that means like we're worthy, right? That means, oh, now, now we can be confident. Like if that person actually likes us, then we can be confident, right? Or if I help this person, you know, this is like the savior, uh, the hero syndrome, right? The hero complex or the hero in complex, so to say, is, you know, if you really look at, okay, well, I'm only worthy when I help someone. I don't have a right to be here unless I help someone, right? So all of that is other focused. Now, what a man is actually really needing like in order to commit to you, is for you to be self-focused. Now, why is that? Well, because like he needs to really feel like you also have an individual identity. You see, in a relationship, you have the couple identity, no doubts about that. But in order to also grow together and to also like really trust each other long-term, create a variety necessary in every relationship, right? You have to also have the individual identity as well. Well, now you can only have that if you dare to focus on yourself to think, you know what, I don't actually like sushi. You know, I don't actually want to go um, and meet your friends tonight. You know, I don't want to go to that party. 
right? Like you're really finding out, like I really want to travel to this country, not this country. So you're really focusing on what do I want? And then remember where energy goes, meaning like towards yourself, attention flows, which is his attention, right? Okay, so if you want him to invest into you, guess what? You go first. You are invited to invest into yourself, to put yourself first, to maybe even put yourself on a pedestal and take the man that you un unnecessarily put on the pedestal off the pedestal. And that way you also allow him to be vulnerable, to be raw, to be flawed, because everybody is, right? Everybody is flawed. Everybody has some weaknesses. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to relate to each other. You know, there's this famous saying, we fall in love with imperfect people. We, we adore imperfect people, we admire perfect people, but we fall in love with imperfect people. You know, and the reason why is because we're really acknowledging each other's weaknesses and vulnerabilities and rawnesses in each other, and it reminds us of our humanness. And the man will very much appreciate that because you're handing him a map, you know, a map of like realness and of humanness, and he will very much enjoy that. Number two is balanced energies. Now, every man and every woman has at least six different energies inside of her or himself. So I'm going to talk to you particularly because we're talking about you as a woman, you know, attracting a man, right? Um, so there's like the, there's the archetype or the energy that is very like queen-like, right? There's the energy of, uh, that's like a playful energy. Um, and that's like more, almost like a little girl has this kind of energy, right? It's like spontaneous and, and, and colorful and creative. Because when you think about like a little girl, right? Or a little boy, like little kids, you know, they just like make, you know, you can give them like a cup, like a plastic cup. And they will turn it into the most amazing things. They turn it into a head. They put it on their ears. They put it on their chest. And they turn into all kinds of things. You're like, oh, I thought the function of the cup was to, you know what I mean? To have a zip of pina colada or like a prosecco or whatever, you know, or juice or water. Um, and they see so many other possibilities. So that is the energy of the inner child, right? So in this particular case would be the inner girl. And then we also have the, the raw, wild, highly embodied energy that we call the wild woman. Um, we also have the lover, which is like much slower, but very sensual, not sexual, but sensual, right? So all the senses are activated, the eyes, the ears, the smell, the taste, right? So you're expanding all the experiences that the man could have in your presence and so on. And then there's also the worker bee and so on, right? So we have all those different energies. And what we want to pay attention to is that those energies are relatively balanced because that way you attract a man into your life who also has balanced energies inside of himself, which means there's less coping and more authenticity. And we talked about this before, right? Because when you have balanced energies inside of yourself, you feel confident. You also feel more resourceful because you know, you know what, like I could help solve this problem with this creative part of me, or I could help solve this problem with this logical part of me, or I could help solve this problem with this physical part of me. So there's all those different parts that can now solve the problem. Now, and what's really, of course, cool is when you have those balanced energies, right? Like the man can really feel there's like this fullness and again, there is, of course, the state change. There's the variety. There is the like, wow, we have different kind of dynamics uh, that we can bounce off each other. We can have so much fun together, right? And that will then lead him to continue to ask you for commitment. And finally, number one is positive tension. So when we step into the unknown, we experience tension. Now, what's the tension all about? The tension is all about you're in this place right now that you know who you are, you know, like you're sitting here right now, you're watching my video or you're driving your car and you're listening to the audio, whatever the case may be, right? So there you are. But then you have this 
part of you that has like that new goal and vision in mind. And now there's tension, right? So now there's like, oh, I want to have this relationship with this man. Now there's tension. I don't have this relationship with this man right now, but that's what I want. And so that's what we call positive tension. Also, positive tension can occur in flirting. Because when you throw a certain word or like a statement, that could be a double meaning to a man or a man throws it to a woman. Like a tension occurs because you don't know yet what the interpretation is that the other person is going to make of that signal you just sent. Right? So that's a positive tension. It gets really exciting. It increases the polarity and it increases the intrigue. So that's going to be really something that the man will look for as well, right? Because it really brings sort of like this variety as well. Now, we talked a lot about how to understand men. So discover how to understand a man so well that you can read his mind in my new masterclass. And you can sign up at mymclass.com. And the link is also in the description below. And of course, if you haven't done so already, watch next. When a man deeply loves you, he will start saying these five things. Lots of love. I'll talk to you soon.